There is an ungodly amount of Five Nights at Freddy's fan games, some of which have rivaled the original series and some that just aren't that great and are questionable as to why they even exist. I'm looking at this game. Seriously, what is Five Nights at Animes? I, I, do, I don't understand. I'm just confused. There are some FNAF fan games that were popular at a point, but seem to have just been forgotten about. Which makes sense, you know, Five Nights at Freddy's and all of its fan games, it can easily put one over the other and just make you forget. There's one game that goes all the way back to the first Five Nights at Freddy's. A game that a lot of us forgot about. This game, of course, is... Five Nights at Waluigi's! You guys remember Five Nights at Waluigi's, right? <laughs> ah, no, I'm just kidding. No, the game that we're talking about is Five Nights at Wario's, made by WW Wario. This game, at least to me, seems like it appeared, it was popular, and then just kind of like disappeared. Now, at first, I thought this game was silly. You know, when I was young, I was like, what the heck? Why is Wario haunted? And like, what is this creepypasta? But as it goes on, this developed into a full story. It even inspired a ton of other Five Nights at Wario fan games to create like this fan game -ception. I'm going to be reviewing and explaining a lot of why Five Nights at Wario's is a classic and also explain its gameplay mechanics. Without further ado, let's get into the game that you all forgot about, Five Nights at Wario's. The first game. Can I just say right off the bat that I actually really like this title screen and the music that goes along with it? I don't know. There's just something appeasing about it. I don't really see too many people comment on it, so I thought I would. Right, moving on. Starting out, it introduces us to the concept of the story. Basically, two business owners, Wario and Waluigi, opened up a restaurant, but it was closed down. But now, it's reopening by the government. Like I said, this, the story develops into something else entirely later on. But we'll get to that. So now that we know a little bit about the story, what's the gameplay like? Well, uh, you see, Five Nights at Wario's released when Five Nights at Freddy's fan games were just coming out. So that means that a lot of them are clones and this game did fall victim to that. Though it does try new things, it just stays very, very true to the Five Nights at Freddy's formula. Camera, left door, right door. But there is a mechanic introduced in this game with the monitor and Mario, but I'll explain that in a second. Let's go over the base gameplay. First and foremost, I like the little noise it makes whenever you flip up the camera. I don't know, that's actually satisfying. And also the little noises that it makes when you're flipping through the cameras. You get a phone call, just like in Five Nights at Freddy's, telling you that there's nothing to worry about and you could just chill. This is basically what it sounded like. Hello? Hi. Uh, so this is your first day at the factory, uh, you probably have nothing to worry about, well, except for this thing, uh, but other than that, you know, it should just be fine, just sit back, you know, relax, why not? Just, just, you know what, you could probably just sleep, to be honest. That's pretty accurate if you ask me. A few things to note about this game is that, one, the ambience is pretty loud. You can pretty much hear a bunch of different noises like creaking doors, footsteps, all that kind of like horror stock sounds just to maybe make it a little bit creepier. Mario will appear on your monitor. He'll basically inch his way closer pretty much at random times. Whenever you pull up the camera, he'll start getting closer. But I don't think he can move while your camera's up, so that rules that out. Just throw up your monitor and you're pretty much safe. You throw it up, and you put it back down, and he's gone. Well, I have quite a lot of time to react to this. Honestly, it's kind of pathetic. He just, like, kind of, like, stands there. But if, like, you know, if you just act like you don't see him, I, I guess he just feels like you're being rude, so he goes away. I, I don't know why else. After completing the sixth night, look a little bit more into what the story is gonna lead to. We're left with an ominous message that leads us on. Our 
Alright, before moving on to the next game, it's worth noting that there are actually other spin-offs of this game that the creator has made. Maybe at the end of the video, after I've covered the main four, I'll check them out, and I'll also review them, but stay until the end for that. And without further ado, let's get into the next game of the series, Five Nights at Wario's 2. It's, it's safe to say that a lot of sequels improve on what they did in the first game, and this game is no exception to that. This game is 100% an improvement from the first game. It still takes inspiration from Five Nights at Freddy's, which is fine, right? That's what a fan game is. You take from the original source material, you make it your own. And that's what this game does. They add a whole new cast of characters in this game as well. This game now features Bowser, Waluigi, Wario, Mario, Luigi, Wario Man, interesting inclusion, Toad, and Peach. I think first I'll explain the gameplay mechanics, then we'll move on to character-specific traits. Oh, it's worth noting that I am going over all the updated versions of the game, since the creator did actually, maybe a year ago, go back and update all the games, which was actually pretty cool. I improved a lot of things, which, hey, you could tell the creator definitely has a lot of passion for this project, and has really had a good time with it, building an amazing fan base. So, good on you, creator. So, after the cutscene plays, we're put in a room that seems more homey, kind of? There's a door to our left and a window to the top right. Something seems familiar here. Eh, probably my imagination. Surprise, surprise, we get another phone call. And is that Daco? WarioWare Incorporated, the number one place for micro games production. They got Daco in this game. Neat. So this is where the game becomes kind of similar to FNAF 2. You don't have any doors to protect yourself. Well, not in this mode. More on that in a second. Instead, if one of the haunted dudes, people? Ghost! If one of the ghosts enter the room, there's a back room that you can enter and you can't move at all. And you have to stand there until you think that you're in the clear. So if they enter the room, just step back, stand there, and hope that they go away. And speaking of the back room, no, not the back rooms. Back room. That's another video I have planned. In this back room, there's now a generator you have to keep wound up or your power will go out. And power is pretty much everything in this game. It's your lights. Though, lightning will occasionally flash in the doorway to provide you with light, but you'll need to keep this on if you don't want to die. But if it does go out, you can actually charge it back up to where it's at full power, and the electricity will turn back on. But it takes a long time, and it is very risky, so it's best to just keep winding that up, and uh, you won't be able to wind it while there is a ghost in your room. So, uh, keep that in mind. It's always going to be going down. So, it's kind of like the marionette. Except you can recover from this. It kind of does get tense when you're in a moment to where, like, the power has gone out and you need to wind it up. You feel like there's a ghost outside waiting, but you feel like you're, you're going to make it. And it's just standing there, charging it, because you're moving. So the ghost can get you at any point. It's pretty tense. I do like this, like, kind of tension-building thing. I think it adds a lot to the gameplay. Oh, a quick side note, by the way. There is an XP system in the game. I don't know what it does. If anybody knows what it does, like, let me know down in the comments below, because I, I actually don't know. Maybe I didn't do enough research into this, but I, I just noticed that there was XP, and I was like, okay, I guess that's a thing now. Another thing about the gameplay is, is that they added phantoms. Like Five Nights at Freddy's 3, except, well, actually, almost exactly like Five Nights at Freddy's 3. The phantoms really just add paranoia. Specifically, Wario Man will enter your room, flash a few times, and kind of, like, freak you out. And Wario Man actually was the one that killed the rest of the group, but he isn't actually technically harmful to you. That's right. In the story, Wario Man, there was a guy that entered the building and was kind of possessed by this evil book, and he slaughtered all of Wario and Co. So, yeah, funny how he's the only harmless one. And that's pretty much the gist of the gameplay elements. Each character has their own unique traits. Just what are they? Some of them are kind of basic and some of them have their own things that make them special. For example, Wario will be the first ghost to show up 
and is aggressive as the week continues, while Luigi is usually the second or third ghost to show up, and is rarely not seen with Wario in the earlier titles. And while Luigi will usually be beside Wario in earlier titles, so in this game, he is. He's also the second fastest character in this game, first being Toad. I'll explain it in a second. Luigi is the second or third ghost to show up. What's interesting about Luigi is that he actually moves slower through the nights because he seems to be depressed for some reason. That reason is uh, pretty interesting, actually. You see, Luigi was like, oh, I knew it was going to happen this whole time. And it's like, I just seen all my friends get slaughtered. He actually took himself out. Luigi was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not going out. Like, you're not going to kill me. I'll, I'll just do it. Uh, which is very morbid, but he is possessed and evil, but he's just more so depressed about all of his friends. So, said Sedge, Luigi. Sedge. So, Peach is the next to show up. I don't know if she does anything special, but she is just a ghost. Mario, like in the previous game, will usually be the last ghost to show up. He has the ability to transport himself through electronic devices, such as computers, TVs, and sometimes the darkness. Usually will approach in stages, so stage 1, stage 2, stuff like that. He stays consistently like this through the games. Though, why this mechanic specifically for Mario? I actually don't know. Right, the next new character is Toad. Toad is the fastest ghost. He's also pretty smart for some reason, they made Toad smart in this game. He usually waits for the right moment to attack. And here's a cute fun fact. He doesn't actually show his face very much and will... He has different stages and when he peeks out of the box and when he peeks out of his little spot, you can know that he's coming. He's like Foxy, but here's the fun fact. He actually hides because he's scared of Bowser still. So that's a little cute fun fact. And speaking of Bowser, Bowser is the largest of the bunch and is also a new addition to this game. He wasn't corrupted or anything. He's just actually pure evil. He doesn't do it out of revenge or anything. He just he just kind of feels like it and he just wants to just do it because why not? <laughs> but after this game, we don't see Bowser anymore and I don't think he has a special mechanic and he's just here for the fans. This game also has a few new game modes. There's the original, which I just explained with no doors. Classic mode, which does actually have doors with new mechanics and new ways of like countering the enemies. True to form, classic Five Nights at Freddy's style which is a really cool inclusion. And Endless Mode, which is see how long you can survive from the onslaught of the ghost. I do like the fact that they added different game modes. While this isn't entirely unique, it is kind of cool to see that you could play this and, and it has replayability and you can go back and play it with different modes. There's even Yoshi in this game who appears as an Easter egg and is actually super aggressive in the room that he's in. This game also features a custom night where you can customize the ghost to your liking. Again, pretty neat stuff. You can tell that a lot of love went into this and, and started to like pick up into its own thing as it builds momentum as time goes on. I mean, with the gameplay mechanics that's been added and with the new characters, you could tell that this game was made with love from both Mario and also Five Nights at Freddy's. It's even cooler because the story that they introduce actually goes more in depth in this version. But that's mostly a summary of the gameplay and all of its elements. Five Nights at Warriors 2 is when it started to come into its own. I really, I know I'm not doing the story justice too much, but I really implore that you guys go check out the video down in the description. One thing I didn't mention while talking about Five Nights at Warriors 2 is that it actually has the most nights technically as it has 29 nights due to the custom night mode, counting the secrets and stuff within. So, yeah. I'll also be going more in depth than other games, as I don't feel like I fully covered the other two well enough. That being said, the next game in the series is one that is actually loved by many, and is considered to be the best in the entire series. This game, of course, is... Five Nights at Wario's 3. Five Nights at Wario's 3 is its own entity. It started to experiment, and for its time, it stood out from other fan games. This game was no longer put a shiny new sticker over FNAF and calling it new. It wasn't just Five Nights at Candy's or animatronics. It now had its own story. It was now developing into its own thing. It had a new atmosphere, 
It had completely new mechanics and a completely different style than what you would normally find in a FNAF fan game. And the best feature about this game is that it has 12 different routes that you could take and each night is different than the last. Take that sister location! This is how you do it right! It also has a choose your own adventure type thing. You'll always start out in the same room, however, the path that you take will be different than the last night you chose. So, if this segment seems longer or seems like it has a bit more favoritism to it, I didn't do it on purpose, there's just a lot more to cover to this game. And also a little bit of favoritism. So, without further ado, let's get into the first night and where it throws you in at. I'm going to be talking about each night and how they're different, the gameplay mechanics behind them in each of the characters in this game. Like I said, it's going to be a long segment, so bear with me. As these games progress, they begin to build a stronger narrative. With this narrative comes cutscenes. With these cutscenes, it tells a little bit more of the story. Well, actually, a lot more. The game starts us off by showing us the past locations we've seen in both 1 and 2. And Peach is on the floor, I guess? She's just chilling there. It then cuts to text saying, I can use this. How mysterious. We start off in what appears to be a mansion in the living room. A loud noise builds up and... We get a phone call from none other than... Hello? Oh, thank god. Another FNAF tuber, Razbowski. I think it's actually really cool. He reached out to other creators to feature them. I mean, I know you're done making these games, but if you ever need a phone guy... Night 1. On both the first and fifth night, you're not able to choose where you go. So on the first night, you will start here. Like in previous games, you have a camera. You can only use it for a short amount of time before this battery meter goes down and it really doesn't take long. If a ghost appears on the left-hand side, look in the opposite direction, don't look at the camera. Just awkwardly stare at the wall, and eventually the ghost will feel ignored and get insecure. Sometimes they'll want to sneak up behind you to spook you, but what their stupid little brains don't realize is that there's a mirror, idiot. In which case, abuse their insecurities once more and pull up your camera. They can't get Senpai's attention, so they leave. Much like a shy tsundere, looking and watching them on the cameras apparently slows them down, but when they're near you, not a glance. And, just like that. You made it through the night. We are then presented with two different options to hide, each option having its own unique gameplay. For the sake of it, let's take the kitchen route, then I'll cover the bathroom. What I actually really like about the kitchen is that it's pitch black. Now, what does that have to do with anything? Now, I'm not sure, but this could be a reference to most FNAF fan games, or just FNAF in general, where the kitchen is pitch black and you can't see anything, and you could just have to rely on noises. I think that's a really cool detail if it is intentional. And if not, well, maybe I'm just overlooking things. So, how is the kitchen? The gimmick of this room is pretty simple. You have an old oven available to you that can light up the room and scare off the ghost. I, I say scare, but it's like catching someone trying to reach their hand in the cookie jar. It's more so startled and they go away. Using this while a ghost isn't in the room will attract the other two ghosts to come to your room and you honestly won't have much time to react at all and your oven will be on a cooldown. So you'll need to use it wisely and rely on your hearing. So if you can't see them, how do you track them? Well. As in most nights, you'll have a camera, and sound cues will only be playing against you on this night, so you can't really just keep your camera down and listen. Though you do have two ghosts against you on this night, Wario and Luigi, and most of these rooms will only have two ghosts against you, but it doesn't make it much easier. It's like, oh, less ghosts, this is gonna be great. No! It's not, actually, it's still hard. This game uses sound cues to make you want to use your light, i.e., footsteps or just random noises that the ghosts try to make to bait and you don't know what's real or not and it will trick you into using your light you'll constantly be wondering if they're in your room or not this night will keep you tense and the whole time you're gonna be like I'm gonna, i gotta use my light i gotta use it they're in here i gotta use it but you know that if you use it and you're wrong there will be a consequence however there is a strategy to this room you'll learn you need to switch through three cameras cam three five and seven after following this, 
you'll make it. Now, what happens when you choose the bathroom? The bathroom has one of the coolest, albeit kind of silly gameplay mechanics out of all the nights. So not only are you put in a bathroom, but, but you take drugs to defend yourself. Confused? Well, let me explain. In this room, you're given different pills to take that kind of scare away the ghost. The game describes it as something about a reaction it forces, but not much other than that. So I guess taking pills will make them go away? Some people do that regardless. Each pill will have a main effect and a side effect, and it's up to you to decide which one you want to take. The choices are short-sighted pill, long-sighted pill, and paralysis. And you can choose which one you want to take. You'll also be able to refill it, but you'll need to time that accordingly. As for the ghost, they'll come in your room randomly, giving a pretty effective jump scare. I mean, really, you'll be taken by surprise. Like in most other nights, you'll have a camera, which you can use to stall them. Staring into the camera will almost always make it to where they can't move or they move to the next room slower. The ghosts in this room are Luigi and Ashley. See, what I really like about this is that within each room, it's a different combination, and each character is going to act differently than the other. Also, Ashley's in this game. To be included in a Five Nights at Wario's fan game, I feel like that's a really cool addition just because it's Ashley. She's a big part in Wario games. I mean, she even, she even has her own song. And speaking of new people, Donkey Kong's also in this game as a hallucination. The way Donkey Kong works is that it's a side effect of the pills. So not only are you going to get one of the three defects that you choose, but also you'll have to deal with Donkey Kong as well, who appears as a hallucination. You just gotta make sure that you're timing your pill and strategizing around the ghost movement. Follow a pattern, take your pills at the right time, and you shouldn't make it through this night. Okay, real quick. Can I just ask, like, what was the inspiration behind taking drugs to get rid of ghosts? Is there, like, a secret lore that I'm, that I'm missing here? If you guys know or, like, want to theorize a potential theory video, let me know down in the comments below because I am curious. We're once again given two options. The living room 2 and bedroom. For the sake of it, let's just start in Living Room 2. In Living Room 2, Waluigi and Wario are active. This room does possess some challenge to it too, mostly because of Wario. This room is actually similar to the first living room that we talked about. If Wario appears, look away, and if Waluigi appears, then use the light to scare him away. This will be a consistent thing with Waluigi, he's basically foxy. But, you do need to be smart with it, since it'll drain your power. So you have to be careful using your light and you can recharge it. However, that's going to take a long time and you need to move to the very left to charge it. The problem with that is, is that that's where Wario appears. If you are charging your light and Wario appears, it is an instant kill. There is no hope for you because you can't turn your head fast enough. So it's this perfect balance of I need to strategize and have a set amount of time before I should charge it. Should I flash it now or like you have to be sure and you're going to doubt yourself a lot on this night because again the ambience in this game even if it is just like it could just be normal stock sounds it uses it against you and still builds the suspense you're gonna want to look. So you'll need to manage your power and time your flashes. So if, well, Wario get me if I charge the power too long. Hurry up. Or if I don't use enough of my power, Waluigi will get me. Did I just pee myself? These are all questions you may ask yourself. It's challenging and overall a solid night. So what about the other option? The bedroom. Like in most nights, the bedroom features two different ghosts. Luigi and, unlike in Smash, Waluigi. In this room, the camera has unlimited power and some camera feeds will be flipped upside down. Why? Don't ask questions! The room feels like being upside down. Oh, and here's an interesting thing. So, the room is speculated to be a child's room. Now, why is this important? Well, you know how you feel safer when the light is on? That ghost, for some reason, can't get you if they're on? Well, that's actually how this room works. You're armed with a lamp that you can turn on if Waluigi or Luigi enter the room. Turning the light on makes them go away. Unfortunately, much like my social life, the lamp is battery charged so you won't be able to keep it on. You also won't be able to charge it at all. So you need to make sure if you're going to look, they are there. Also, this room has moving animations for the characters when you spot them. Look at them. Watch them shimmy away. After completing that night, 
once again, two more options appear. We choose between hallway or playroom. And because I wanted to save the more fun one for last, let's go into the hallway. If you choose this night, congratulations, you chose hard mode. The hallway has three different places in which ghosts can get you. The right door, left door, and the door behind you. That's right, they can come behind you. I hope you weren't wanting to sleep tonight. We even get a call from Daco, who sounds like a villain now. However, we're kind of returning to the original formula here, and you can close doors to block the ghost. And because there are three ways of getting you, there are now three different ghosts. Mario, Luigi, and Waluigi. But no need to panic, you have your camera- Uh, wait, nope, just kidding, you don't. Apparently on this night, the system is glitched out and doesn't show the other rooms, which means you would need to rely solely on sound in order to guess where the ghosts are. You won't be able to look for too long since the camera battery drains the longer you look at it. Then, you won't be able to listen, and you could die. So I should make it clear that you'll need to be opening up your camera to listen where the ghosts are and listen out for sounds. But in doing this, your camera battery will die. So you'll kind of need to time it. And this night is very difficult. Mario, like in the other games, has a lullaby that plays where he's at. And that's going to be the way you predict where Mario is. This night will force you to be strategic and paying attention at all times. The suspense here combined with the noises comes together beautifully. I cannot stress enough just how scary this part is. You never feel safe. You constantly have that sense of, are they behind me? So long as you try to track your movement, limit your camera, you should be okay. But this night may take a few tries, unless you're built differently, which I know at least one of you guys in the comments could be like, I beat this first try, not even the hardest night. All right, I hear you. Okay, I hear you. We get it. You're built differently. No, but I am proud of you. Good job. Right. So play your cards right, strategize, figure out where they're going to go, and you'll complete the night. Let's see what the playroom's about, shall we? Oh boy! The playroom? This is gonna be so much fun! Just kidding, it's awful. The ghosts in this room are Mario, Yoshi, and Wario. That's right, we have three ghosts this time. More the merrier, they say, except when it's ghosts and they want to kill you, but... Uh... Okay, but before I really get into the gameplay, I just need to mention once again, we get a call from Daco, and can I say that... Okay, the bringing in YouTubers to the story is fun and cool, but the voice acting? We won't stop. We won't stop until you pay for what you've done. I swear. I swear. You will pay. Yeah, yeah it could be better. There was effort here, and I'm sure Daco had fun. And that's what matters. But regardless, it was very nice of you, WW Wario. Right, gameplay time. The playroom is super bright, open, and has music playing. Yeah, so basically you're saying, hey ghost, come kill me, I'm over here. This time around, you need to wind the box to make the ghost think there are children in this room, since they don't harm kids. But that's not nearly enough, and you'll need to wind two music boxes, because you really have to trick them. So how does this work? Well, there's one with your camera down that you could charge manually, and the other is digital which will have the music box when you open the camera. And because this game doesn't want to make it easy and it hates you, the music box will appear in different cameras. So it'll change locations, so it'll be up to you to hunt down the music box and wind it through the camera. And it's constantly going to be going down. And if that was just it, it'd be way too easy. Because, aside from that, Mario will constantly sit inside the TV. And he'll inch closer to you the longer the night goes. Mario can enter your room regardless of the music box's condition. You'll need to watch out for him. He'll just randomly start approaching and making his way to you. Mario's job is to kind of pressure you, and if you don't know how to deal with him, you could be in trouble. However, that's pretty much it to this night. Aside from three ghosts coming at you, I feel like the difficulty on this night is... If you get the hang of it, which you can pretty quick, it shouldn't be too hard. Just gotta keep alternating, find a rhythm to wind both of the music boxes, keep your eye on Mario, and you should be okay. Oh, and how you avoid Mario is the same as it is in every game. You pull up your camera and then you pull it down. And just like that, you've completed the night. If you thought we were going to night 5, you're mistaken. Each night you complete will lead you down different paths, so choosing the kitchen will lead you down another path. Then that path will lead to another, and so on. The ones I have to talk about are Living Room 3, 
bedroom two, laundry, and the staircase. And I was only talking about a specific path just for the sake of it. So now we're going to take a completely different path and talk about the other nights that I have yet to discuss. So let's start with bedroom two. The second bedroom in the house can be chosen if you complete the bathroom after night two. If you choose the bedroom, prepare to play FNAF 3, if you like that game. Here's how it works. You'll need to go through the cameras and play sound to keep Wario away. Or rather, tap the heck out of him to make him uncomfortable. Break your mouse doing this, like really spam it. Like, like, absolutely destroy your mouse. Basically, you just need to hunt him down and spam the hell out of your mouse once you see him. You're using noise against him. But unfortunately, if that was just it, it'd be too easy. Donkey Kong will randomly appear on the cameras. And you can switch the camera feed or flip it down to avoid him. Donkey Kong can also appear in your room and you need to flip your camera up. Mechanics here are really cool because they kind of work against each other. You need to hunt down Wario. However, Donkey Kong is here to kind of like outset this. You know, if it was just hunt down Wario, click him a bunch, you know, easy peasy. But Donkey Kong can appear while you're in the process of hunting down Wario, which forces you to have like this. Oh, I need to find him. I need to find him right now. And I think that this night really, it, it, it just, it does a good job at scaring you. Plus, look at Donkey Kong. You don't want to mess with this dude. All right. After you break your mouse hunting down Wario and being scared by Donkey Kong, you'll complete the night. And next, I'll talk about the laundry room. You can choose the laundry room if you complete the bathroom and make it to the fourth night. If you do hide in this room, you'll have three ghosts against you. Luigi, Waluigi, and Mario. And usually when you have three ghosts against you, it's probably going to include Mario. I will say this though. This night is genius. It takes inspiration from FNAF 4 while keeping its unique charm. First, you'll need to listen out for Waluigi and Luigi's breathing. But if Mario's close, you will need to turn on the washing machine to make noise. Unfortunately, this will make it to where you cannot hear the others. Nothing to defend you here, so you need to rely on your movement. If Luigi enters a room, you'll need to shake your head or move from left to right. If Waluigi enters a room, stay still. It's worth noting you won't be able to see them enter the room as they approach from behind. You can tell who it is by the camera and process of elimination. You want to keep the washing machine on every chance you get, because Mario will go through the room super fast. See, without the washing machine, Mario will be able to tell where you're at. Thus, he's able to travel from room to room. Thus, he's able to travel from room to room really quickly. And what sucks is that Mario won't be able to be pushed back. But again, you won't be able to hear breathing if you have the washing machine on. So, through most of the night, you're gonna have to have the washing machine on and you're going to have to risk Mario approaching you if you decide to turn it off to listen for the breathing. And you can figure out using the cameras where the ghosts are going to be and when they're going to be there. However, it's getting to this point and losing trial and error. It can be very terrifying because it's this mixture of you know that everyone can get you all at once and there's nothing that you can do. Laundry does a great job at encapsulating this tense feeling and i know i say that a lot for these nights but i honestly thought that the laundry room was really cool right however just keep your rhythm uh turn off the washing machine if you absolutely need to listen out for the breathing and then turn it back on monitor each of the ghosts through the camera and you should be okay. Next is the staircase. You could choose a staircase if you complete the bathroom and re you're up against Ashley and Wario on this night. You have two things to defend yourself. One is your hands, where you can punch the ghost. <laughs> Just kidding. It's not fun like that. Instead, you'll play peekaboo. And two is your camera. To get rid of Wario, you'll need to stare at the camera and find which room he's in. After you do, just look at him long enough and he'll move back for some reason. If you don't, he inches his way closer. And you can only do this when he's in Cam 5. Ashley, on the other hand, will appear in on the hallway and you need to raise your hands to block her off. Ignoring her long enough will make her frustrated and she will leave. So this is where you'll need to play peekaboo. You can still look for Wario on the camera, however, so that's still helpful. So holding up your hands for too long will make it to where your vision is just completely, you can't use it anymore. 
No more, no more eyesight, and you won't be able to see him at all. You just gotta avoid Ashley and watch Wario, and you should be okay. Now, for the moment you've all been waiting for. Night 5. The Cellar. After completing every night, despite the path you've chosen, you will wind up in the cellar. It starts off with the phone call, and basically the phone guy says that this house doesn't have a cellar. He gives you some tips and says good luck. Must be nice out on the outside, huh, Rasbowski? How about you come and do this? So, this is it. The grand finale. In this room, you're up against Luigi, Waluigi, and Wario. Your camera is equipped with night vision, and is the only way you could see the ghost. Also, there are no other rooms, just the cellar. And I think that this adds to the feeling of being, like, trapped and encapsulated in a space. And in case that wasn't enough, your camera is on a battery, and it drains extremely quickly. So you may always be needing to charge it, much like other nights. You can flash your light, and with this, you'll be able to move Waluigi. He's the only one affected by this, so if you spot him, be sure to flash a door. However, doing this will make it to where you can't use your camera for a time. It'll force you to be strategic, so your light is to defend against Waluigi. Mario and Luigi will appear on both the left and right side, and you just need to look away from them. But you'll need to be watching out for them on the cameras, and also being careful with your light. Now, there is something special about this night. After completing the night, you're most likely presented with this. <laughs> so it wasn't you, either. Mm, strange, you two look so similar. We... 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 will make him apologize. We... will keep searching... forever. A bad ending screen? What the heck? That's right, in this game, there's another ending. So... How do you get the good ending? Well, you'll need to go through each of the rooms to find a piece of a music box. After doing this, you will achieve the good ending. I'm not going to tell you where to find them. I know, I'm sorry. But there is still more to this game, and quite frequently, it already seems like I'm playing favorites with this game. So what on earth could there be more to Five Nights at Wario's Nkachi? Well, I'm glad you asked. After completing the game, you're presented with an additional menu. The custom night. Here, we have standard, custom, and what's this? The daytime quest? Well, this was added to the 2.0 version of the game, which I will explain shortly. First, let's go over the other modes. Standard mode is everything we experience, and you'll be able to take the other routes you haven't yet. The custom night is where it gets really cool. Here, you'll be able to decide any room you want in what order you want. What's even cooler is, you get to choose who you want to be active in these modes. The only character you can't control is DK, as technically, he's not a character in this. True to Custom Knight, you can choose the difficulty and the characters. This is super neat, as it's a great way to experience the knights how you would want them. So, being able to pick and choose your own route with different ghosts as opposed to two or three, you could have all of them in whatever room you want to. In whatever order you want to. This has like a Mario Party vibe to it. I'm not sure why, but it does kind of feel like Mario Party. A reference, maybe? Anyways, if you thought that is it, you are wrong because there is even more to this game. Within the daytime quest mode, the daytime quest mode was added in Five Nights at Wario's 4, but an update was released and it was made for this game. This is basically a separate game all on its own, having new mechanics and different ways to play it. So, what is it? You're presented with a different menu and other little dudes to choose from. Though, you'll need to unlock the other skins you can have. But for now, I'll explain what we're doing. So, in this mode, you'll be exploring the house you play in from a top-down minigame perspective. Here, you'll gather other resources and spend money you earn to unlock different areas of the house until the clock in the top left corner reaches 12. From here, based on where you are during the night, the original nights come into play. So say you just bought the way to the hallway and the timer starts to count down. 
once it reaches zero, you're gonna start in the hallway level during the night. But wait, there's more. In addition to the original gameplay, you now have a hunger bar that depletes with time. Using the food you find scattered around during the daytime, you can replenish it, which you'll use uh, during the night. This not only makes the game more challenging, but suspenseful as well. I cannot stress enough how cool this game mode is. It's a choose your own adventure with customizable features and exploring the house and going, oh, it's, it's this room is such an awesome feeling. One of the best features added to this game and for good reason. Essentially, this mode is a survival mode with exploration and it's, it's just like, it's so cool. It's so creative. Five Nights at Wario's 3 is considered to be the best game in the franchise and for good reason. There's even a secret seventh night, but I won't be talking about it here. It'll be up to you to find out the mystery. This game is filled with so much love and thought put into it. Even the story becomes more in-depth and more of its own thing. Each night was made with care, and each night is so unique to its own. There's tons of rep there's tons of replayability as well, and repeated playthroughs are always going to be very fun. You can tell WW Wario put his soul into this, and I cannot be more grateful. Huh, see what I did there? Soul? Ghost? I don't think that's the same thing. Never mind. And you know what? One of the best things about this game is that he made it for free. They didn't need to do that. Even cooler is that it has cross-progression with different games. Different things will happen if you play the other games in order with the updates added to them. How cool is that? With new characters too, based on the story. But this isn't over yet. So cross progression, it's free, made with care. I highly advise you guys go check it out and play through all the games. There's still one more game that we need to talk about. The technical final game in the series. The one to unlock all the secrets. The final game in the series, Five Nights at Wario's 4. I actually didn't know anything about this game until I started to make this, and I think not a lot of people actually know about it. Five Nights at Wario's was popular to a degree, but in the case of Five Nights at Wario's, I actually had to hunt it down. So, that being said, does the fourth game in the series hold up? What's the gameplay like? Well, my dear viewer, let's find out. We start off with the cutscene of us falling asleep, just to wake up to a TV. And let me just say, this game has now completely deviated from any other game in the series, and really started to dabble into its own thing. I mean, I know I say that a lot, and I've been like repeating that throughout the video, but I mean that like Five Nights at Wario's 4 is such a different concept, it's hard to recognize it as a Five Nights at Freddy's fan game. Here... You have a TV remote, and that's it. You'll need to know a thing or two about how the characters function in previous installments, as this game kind of expects you to know how to counter them, or rather, expects you to be familiar with them, which makes sense. You can learn, it's just better to play with the other games. Also, there are different weeks in this game. So, instead of nights 1 through 5, you get week 1 and week 2, all of them having their own nights, which is pretty cool. Let's start with night one of week one. The first thing we want to find is the news channel. It'll tell you some tips and tricks on how to avoid the ghosts that will now appear on your TV. The only ghost active on this night is, you guessed it, Wario. The night is to just introduce you to the mechanics. You'll need to constantly be switching through the TV, but your remote only has a certain amount of power. Every time you switch channels or lower the TV brightness, the power on the remote goes down. You can actually charge the remote by turning the power on the TV. However, doing this will risk you being game-ended, so you'll need to time it wisely. Just don't be dumb. You should be okay. You also have a radio button, but you don't need to use it on this night. It's just kind of there. You'll understand in a second. You need to lower your brightness every time you see Wario on the camera. And don't switch at all. Like, don't don't flip the channel. I know it's tempting. I know you might be scared, but don't do it. This will be the only way to make him go away, and you'll repeat the process, and you'll make it to night two. Uh, oh, as we expected, night one will be very easy. Flip through the camera, see Wario, turn off the brightness, charge your remote, etc., etc. Get a feel for the game. Now, what's cool is, is that every night that you complete, you'll get Wario coins. 
And with these coins, you can buy cosmetics for your remote. So, there's a little cool detail for you. Now, on to the next night. This night becomes more challenging as Mario becomes active. In this, Mario will come closer slowly in each channel, and you need to switch the radio in order to calm him. Like in the other games, pretty neat callback. Because, you know, Mario will always come with like a music box and you'll need to use it to calm him. The consistency of these games is so cool. But just know that if you stay away in the radio too long, Wario can get you. This game will get really creative with his placements too. Finding Wario can sometimes be a challenge as he will only sometimes show pieces of himself or just hide within the TV. Which furthermore adds to the challenge. Change the brightness, calm Mario with the music, and you should make it to night three. Night three starts out with you watching the news as you always do, then this happens. Three positive about this project. actually crash your game and your menu will be messed up. This is pretty cool as it sort of resembles a .exe game, which I'm a fan of. We get to the third night. Luigi now joins the crew and all you gotta do is switch off the camera he's on when he shows up. He's already depressed and, you know, if you just ignore him, like, you know, I do my problems, he'll, he'll feel sad and give up. So, this is where it's gonna get more challenging. Night four. Alright, so you made it. The whole gang is active on this night, and Mario becomes more aggressive for it. Also, a new gameplay feature is added from this point forward. A red button will appear on your TV remote, and you need to press- Once you press it, a menu will appear with File and Help as the options. Your remote can now break, but you can fix it with the new file menu you have. There's also a Cut Rope option, which cuts Peach's rope to stop her from getting it. But you should change the channel since it's faster. Granted, your remote isn't broken. That's how you would avoid Peach. Either cut the rope or turn, turn the channel and you should be okay. And while turning the channel is faster, it also is risky because you can risk breaking your remote. So choose wisely. And from here, you'll need to start being strategic and make sure to time when the remote breaks. So that way the others can't get you and you always have your defense. And if you keep this process up, you will get the hang of it. It might take a little bit, but I believe in you. And then you'll make it to night five. In this night, Nightmare Wario becomes active. Remember that help button that I mentioned? Well, after you click it, it'll give the option to stop Demon W, which will repair the Demon Wario. Everyone prior is active and very much more aggressive. Though, by now, you'll likely know what to do for everyone. It's just learning the timing and patterns on things is when it gets hard. Nightmare Wario is actually, well, it uh, looks like this. And he'll only be active in nights five, so if you persist, remain strategic, you'll complete this night. Afterwards, you unlock week two, and what's this? Multiplayer? I know a lot of you guys would probably be curious about this, but let's talk about week two first. Because if you thought week two was the same as week one, but harder, you're kind of right, but you're also wrong. Week two kind of functions similar to week one, except you can now look away from the TV down a hallway after you turn off said TV. While Luigi can now appear down said hallway, and you'll need to flash your light at him to make him go away. Like in other games. Like I said, the continuity in this game is so cool. There's also now three channels on the TV as opposed to what it was before. Wario is also in this night, same as always. It's a cool way to introduce the hallway mechanic while also keeping it simple and easing you into it. Night 2. Peach now joins the crew and is as deadly as ever. You may want to cut ties with her. I really wrote that in the script, huh? Peach only appears if the brightness is off. And remember, you need to turn off the brightness to counter Wario. So it kind of forces this kind of like, will she appear? I need to be able to move quickly. It's like, oh, I turned off the brightness. I'm safe. Just kidding. There's Peach. And just like that, you move on to the next night. In week two, night three, Wario, Waluigi, Peach are more aggressive. 
and Luigi is now active in this night too. Funny thing is though, you could straight up just avoid Luigi if you stay on channel two and three. You only really need two and three for this night anyway, so take that Luigi. Man, no wonder he's depressed. Though if you want to get rid of him, you need to click on the part he's missing. Next night, everyone is active this night, including Mario. If you switch to channel three, Mario will break your remote. Not because he wants to kill you, but because he holds a personal grudge on that stupid remote. As the ghosts do every night, they get more aggressive. Not much else to say about this night. Night 5. Like in the other Night 5, the crew is now more aggressive and Nightmare Mario will start to appear. You just need to do everything that you were doing before. It's the same as week 1, just a bit harder and with more mechanics. Well, okay, time for me to admit something here. I vaguely mentioned this, but I have hid this from you guys. You remember how I said there was cross progression? There's another game I haven't talked about that's in the main series, Five Nights at Wario's Origins. I likely won't talk about it in this video, but just know it exists and it is important in order for you to get the secret ending of Five Nights at Wario's 4. That being said, here's where cross progression happens. If you guys want me to talk about it, I will. Just let me know down in the comments below. Right, so what's the ending like for this game? After the player beats the final night, has beaten the other four games, and has the save files on the same folder of Five Nights at Wario's 4, someone will say this. Well done. You have completed all five games. There is a piece of a golden key hidden somewhere through the previous games. I had to hide them, or she would find out. It is very, very important that you download the latest versions of the other games, otherwise my key won't appear. The in-game version of each key must be version 3 point all or higher. You must also make sure to put all five games and their save files in the same folder. Come back here when you have all four pieces. Hopefully, she won't suspect anything. But I've had this so deep within. If the player manages to find all four pieces of the golden key, they will access the boss fight against the main antagonist, Emma, otherwise known as the virus. I won't be covering the boss fight as I want you to experience it for yourself, but I dare anyone to try and complete this challenge. Right, so on to the extras. I mentioned earlier there was a multiplayer mode. And I'm sure you have some questions. So it basically goes like this. One person takes control over Wario crew and one person has a remote. <laughs> Bringing multiplayer in a FNAF fan game? This is such an awesome thing to do. Like, honestly, I think this is an amazing idea. But other than that, there isn't too much to say about the multiplayer. There is a custom night for both week one and two. In which, you guessed it, everything is customizable. Play the game however you want. There's also a quest mode in this game too, and it's just as good as it is in Five Nights at Wario's 3, and I highly advise you go check it out for yourself. It's a lot of people's favorite part about this game. Scatter in a few secrets in the menu, and that's Five Nights at Wario's 4. The Five Nights at Wario series is filled with love, care, and attention to detail. It's innovative and creative and all other great words I can't think of. The amount of thought put into the gameplay, the story, secrets, and even the idea of cross-progression and continuity is just amazing, and I think it stands out from other FNAF fan games. I'd even go as far as to say it's become its own thing entirely. I know I may not have done some of the game's justice or I may have left parts out, but it's just all the more reason why you should go and look into it. This video is basically a love letter to the series, and a thank you to WW Wario who made this possible and also free to play. If you somehow come across this video and you're somehow watching it, thank you. Like I said, I may have left some details out and I may not have been able to explain some things, um, you know, Easter eggs and stuff like that, but yeah. It's whoever made it this far, thank you for watching. I spent the longest I have ever making a video, like over a month. <laughs> um, so stay tuned for more content like it. I'm only hoping to improve, and since this is my first video doing it like this, I know it isn't the best, but I put work into it. Go check out WW Wario's channel for the full story, as like I said, I didn't really 
uh, cover it at all in this video. It's mostly just appreciation, but yeah. Once again, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.